Cannabis Investing Newsletter. Today, we're looking at Aurora Cannabis, symbol ACB. They've released their uh, latest earnings not too long ago. Uh, it's one of the bigger companies. At one point, Aurora Cannabis was actually the darling of the industry. Now, they're in complete decline. And I wanted to go over the particulars of this company's financials simply so we can get a, a sort of benchmark. I've covered Tilray. I've covered Afria. Uh, of course, those two companies are merging. I tried to do each one individually. Then I'm going to look at the combined companies with their purported cost savings next. I've done Canopy Growth. Now I'm looking at Aurora. These are the bigger ones. There's still a couple more to go. And some of those are actually doing quite well, but these are these are sort of the name brand cannabis stocks. So wanted to take a look at Aurora Cannabis. Um, I'm D.H. Taylor, Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I deal totally with cannabis stocks. I have some 350 companies that I'm looking at. I break down the revenues. I take a look at the margins, the costs, and the earnings. From that, I put together a picture as to what a stock could be worth so that we can get rid of the hype and so that you as an individual investor can make a knowledgeable investment decision as to which of these companies to get involved in. Cannabis is offering us a once in a generational opportunity to get into something that's going to grow substantially. Unfortunately, a lot of retail investors have no clue how to invest, let alone get involved in the cannabis industry. So I'm breaking all this down. I'm D.H. Taylor. I am a top rated analyst. Um, I'm recognized throughout the industry. I contribute content to multiple publications online, some of the top tier Wall Street journals out there. Uh, if you like this content, please, by all means, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to put up about two videos per day. I, like I said, I've got 350 companies and I've gone through most of them. Some of them like the top or the bottom 100. They're never going to go anywhere in this world. They've got a long way to go. That's fine. So if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you're going to get updates regularly. As well, I'm constantly uh, putting information up on my blog, CannabisInvestingNewsletter.com. I have a free email where you can get my content delivered to your inbox for free. That information shows up on my Twitter feed and my Facebook page, so you can, uh, you can find me on those locations. If you really like this information, share the video. Push it forward to your content, Twitter or Facebook, whatever. For those of you who are interested, I've got premium content. I have about 12 to 15 stocks, my top picks for a one-year subscription. It's $40. That's it. This gives you full access to the premium content. I put in my buy signals, what prices I'm looking for. I put in the sell prices that I'm looking for to get out. I'm trying to update this on a weekly basis. Unfortunately, right now, we're on pause as we wait for some of these companies to report. And this is, I've seen this generally across the board in the cannabis industry. There's a lot of companies that have not reported when they typically would. They're about a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks behind. We're getting there. So this, this website, my website itself has just launched. This is literally week two. This is Monday, week two. So I'm still putting up a lot of content. If I'm pushing through two videos a day in about 30 days, there's going to be plenty of content up there. So let's take a look at Aurora Cannabis. Last November, you can see there was a big spike right around the earnings time. So that spike was actually driven by the blue wave when Biden took the presidency. So you have the House of Representatives, Democrat. It looked likely that, that there was a chance that the, Cong uh, the Senate could swing in a, in a re-election vote in January for the Democrats. And of course, Biden took, took the victory. Unfortunately for Aurora, 
immediately after that big spike, there was a big sell-off, and that was due primarily to the earnings. You can see on that chart, the EB down below, Aurora didn't pull it off. Then in January, of course, we had um, two, two events happen. Uh, the Senate went in favor of the Democrats with Kamala, Vice President Kamala Harris deciding the uh, vote there. Then we had the Reddit attack, which pushed up stocks significantly throughout January. Um, since then, there's been a lot of selling. There's a lot of blood in the streets. Last week was really ugly. The truth of the matter is, none of these stocks should have been up there. Aurora is one of those stocks that got pushed up that is a name brand retail stock that a lot of people know about. And I'm going to break down these numbers and you're going to sit there and say, why did this stock go up at all? And it's unfortunate because Aurora did have so much opportunity. The truth is, they've got a lot of revenue. Uh, they started out back in 2018. They were a medical only cannabis company. Then of course, in October, 2018, they switched to adult use recreational cannabis up in Canada. Uh, there was significant gains and uh, all through 2019, you could see that there was a big surge in revenue growth. Unfortunately, a lot of these bigger companies, their business model was to produce high amounts of low quality cannabis. Now, the smaller companies that I'm comparing these larger companies to, what you find is that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in what is what are they're being called boutique growers. Now, they're small companies. I mean, they may be 20, 30, 50, 100 million dollars in rev uh, in uh, market capitalization. Aurora Cannabis is in the billions. But just because this is one of those bigger companies doesn't necessarily mean it's a better company. And I'm going to compare Aurora Cannabis's revenues, their margins, costs to another company, one of my top picks. So you can get a baseline understanding of how these bigger companies are just not measuring up. So over the past year, Aurora has peaked out at 55.6 million for their quarter. Since then, there was a significant drop. They've kind of meandered to the side a little bit, but they haven't been able to really progress forward. That's too bad because the entire Canadian cannabis industry has seen a 132% increase during this same period of time. If you saw the chart, and I'll throw it up from time to time with some of these companies, when you look at the chart for total retail sales of cannabis in Canada, it's, it's a straight line up, whereas Aurora over the past year has basically gone nowhere. At the same time, they do represent about 7% of all retail sales in Canada. The month of uh, October 2020 for Canada retail sales was about $270 million. It was about $750 million total retail sales over the past three uh, three months during that time that quarter Aurora Cannabis printed 53 million so that's about seven percent of total retail sales despite that large size they've not been able to really grow at the same rate their focus is in the wrong area all the companies, I've, all these bigger companies I've been looking at who have started out with a wholesale mind frame of producing large quantities of low grade cannabis with the attempt to just sort of dominate this low margin stuff. Nearly every one of those companies is getting out of that wholesale mindset and they're now shifting towards premium. Interestingly, all those small boutique companies, that's what they've been doing since day one and they're outperforming these billion dollar companies. Here's a, here's a look at one of my top picks on the right hand side. Keep in mind, Aurora Cannabis and this smaller company started out about the same time in the same arena. 
yet this smaller company is outperforming Aurora Cannabis in growth quarter after quarter, year after year, despite its smaller size. And now at this point, it's printing larger revenue numbers. So again, you get these big companies, they brought in a lot of big dollar investments. Um, Canopy Growth, of course, got Constellation Brands bringing them in $4 billion. And honestly, that investment has gone nowhere but down. But this smaller company, and, and a lot of my top picks, they look similar to this. These companies are just printing. They're, they're almost cash machines. They're printing revenue growth gains quarter after quarter after quarter. Whereas this big name company with big dollars and big headlines, nowhere. Next thing we're going to look at is Aurora Cannabis's gross margins. Now keep in mind, they printed about 53, 55 million, call it 50, whatever you want to call it. 25% of that was in gross margins. This is an entirely small number. Canopy growth comes in around 21%. I think Afria comes in at 17%. These big name companies are just not bringing in gross margins. They have almost no pricing power. They end up selling their product for as low the price as they possibly can just to make a quick buck. But when you look at these companies side by side, you ask yourself the question, which business model is going to be the better model? And I keep looking at these bigger companies. I keep looking at the headlines they make and the retail investors who get involved in them. And I just shake my head. It's They don't know what they, these individuals don't know what they're getting involved in and they're getting crushed. So looking at these gross margins, over the past three quarters, Aurora's printed about 28.5% uh, for the three-quarter average. Sorry, I've got month written there. Three-quarter average um, over the past three quarters. The best I've been seeing are anywhere from 60% to 65%. I do have one company that I just put a video up printed 67.5% gross margins for their last quarter. So at 28.5%, that's, that's not even in the ballpark. What does that mean for those of you who don't understand gross margins? So if you have a $10 pre-roll, um, and let me, let me switch over to the next slide real quick, to compare these better companies coming in at 62.1% with gross margins versus Aurora's 25.8%. Here's, here's how that breaks down. If you have a $10 pre-roll, all right, you have costs that go into making that product. And I'm just talking product costs. We're going to get into operational costs immediately after this. Aurora Cannabis, off that $10 pre-roll, is able to keep $2.58 or 25.8% of that $10 as gross products or broke profits. Whereas this smaller company is keeping $6.21 for gross profits. Which company would you prefer to invest in? Hopefully, your goal is to maximize your return, so therefore, you're going to be looking for a company that has the highest possible gross margins. 60 to 65%, when I find companies that are printing those kinds of numbers, they make my list. But that's just one step. The next thing is operating efficiencies. Operating efficiencies are total operating costs over total revenues. You just divide the two out. Basically, at 95.1%, if Aurora Cannabis sells $10 worth of product, it costs them $9.51 in operational costs just to maintain that product. All right, operational costs are things like rent, um, sales, general and administrative, SGNA is what we call it in the industry, things like that. So this is a really high number, but there are some outliers. You can see that the number jumps around a little bit, and that tells us that there are some outlying 
numbers. Um, the three-quarter average is 67.5%. This is still a very high number. The average three-quarters that I found for some of my best favorite picks is roughly about 32% on an operational basis. Now, mind you, this is a mathematical equation. If Aurora Cannabis's revenue were to increase, which it has not been doing, then this number falls naturally. At the same time, if Aurora Cannabis management sat there and said, our operating costs are too high, we need to shutter some more buildings, we need to cut costs uh, in, in, say, marketing, sales, things like that, the back office uh, things that are going on, that would improve this metric as well. But generally speaking, what I'm seeing in this number is that there's a lot of idle capacity with, say, um, facilities, which I know Aurora has been going heavy into shutting down their, their overbuild. And they're also cutting employment in their, uh, their back office, SG&A and things like that. They still have a long ways to go. The metric we're looking for is roughly 32%. However, I want to emphasize if revenues go up, revenues alone, if they go up and operating costs remain exactly the same, this number naturally falls. So what we do when we look at this is we sit there and say, how efficient is Aurora Cannabis at making a product? They are not nearly as efficient as other companies. This is the bottom line for operating efficiencies. And here's a good example. That same company that I pointed out, you know, obviously in the beginning, there were a, a, a large, uh, as, as revenues were significantly lower, operating costs were significantly higher based on total revenue. It's a percentage. But as that company increased its revenue, you can see operating costs decreased, meaning on a cost basis, company B, this smaller company, one of these companies that's in my top picks, was able to produce a product at a more optimal cost level. Aurora Cannabis is getting crushed in this department. Net incomes. Usually you get some outlying numbers here and there. Four quarters ago, Aurora printed nearly one billion in write-off losses. Uh, this decimated their their bottom line. It decimated their cash position. It, this is just a hemorrhaging story. They have since pivoted significantly. They're shuttering facilities. That costs money. Shutting down facilities, closing things. Um, selling off assets, doing what they go, or have been doing, writing off those losses, and it's showing up in the net income. Last quarter, minus $230 million. They've been, for the past year, shuttering things, shutting things down, cutting costs, and it's just a, a story of nothing but hemorrhage. When we look at this, you're looking at minus 990 million, minus another 90 million, minus 81 million, minus 230 million. These restructuring costs are significantly deteriorating Aurora Cannabis' financial position. And I want to point this out simply because we also need to look at cash on hand. With the story of Aurora Cannabis, they are now sitting on $305 million. Mind you, they just lost $230 million. They had to go to the cash register to not only... They were at $113 million the quarter previously. They lost $230 million. They raised another $200 million just to bring themselves to where they are right now. So that's about $450 million that they had to uh, bring in and then write off. This dilutes your shares. If they go to the, to the stock market and issue more shares, you're diluting. If they do a private bought deal, 
those bought deals are always with some kind of sweetener added to it. They may look at their stock price and say, it's trading at six bucks. Give us a hundred million dollars. We'll put an exercise price at say $7.50, $10, wherever it might be. And for that privilege, we'll allow you to buy this warrant at say $5. Well, that's, you know, a whole dollar underneath the stock price's current current price. So not only are these individuals getting a sweetheart deal, although they are required to hold on to that to an exercise price of say 750, 10 bucks, wherever it might be, and there may be like a 2-year, 1-year, 5-year term on that warrant. Um there's now more shares in existence. So when it comes time for earnings per, per share to be divvied up, well, there's more people showing up at the table saying, I want my share. So this is dilution. Um, they just lost $230 million. They've got $300 million on hand. If they have another quarter as bad, they're going to have to go to the cash register again and continue to dilute their shares which continues to put the yardstick for earnings per share further and further away as more and more people show up to the table wanting earnings. Not good for an investment. I typically try to put together some kind of forward projection. I sit there and I ask a question, what trajectory is revenues on? What trajectory are margins on? And the next quarter, what might we expect? What can we, what can we reasonably predict in the future based on past performance? And given that, where could revenues, margins, and earnings be? And it, when you have a company that, that's at break even, when you start doing this forward projection, it's really a, a, a great tool to break these things down because then you can start putting together a forward looking picture, use a forward earnings multiple to project wh where this stock might be. It, it's interesting to me, the number of companies that I have that I'm looking at out of those 350 that are at break even right now. They're all hitting break even or just slightly above or just slightly below that level. When you're at that level, it's easy to look four quarters in advance and say, you know what? Their, their revenues continue to move forward. Their margins are continually very high. Their cost structures are continually moving lower and lower. Based on that, we can predict fewer future earnings and things like this, and we can project that using a future earnings multiple where a particular stock could be. We have absolutely no ability to do that with Aurora Cannabis. If I were to project 60 million in revenue, which would be just a 10% revenue growth from last quarter, which they just printed to next quarter, if they were to, to hit 35% margins, which is about where they've been. There's been no real growth on gross margins, despite the fact that they're printing so much or, or, or selling so much product, their margins are, are just going nowhere because they're producing low quality product. Despite the fact that we have those variables, the bottom line is there, that any addition that we could pro project in the future does virtually no dent in the losses that they've had over the last four quarters. With a 10% increase in revenue, with a consistent margin of some 35%, at 60 million, gross profits move from 13 million to 20 million. So we have a, an additional 7 million if Aurora can print 60 million in revenues. I think they could easily print 60 million in revenues, but unfortunately that's a 7 million top line growth from what was 55 million at say 30% to 60 million 
you're moving from 13 million to 20 million. Operational costs are, are largely remaining the same at 35% um, over the past several quarters. That additional 7 million does virtually nothing when you look at the bottom line losses. Um, it's, it's a story of hemorrhage. And until Aurora Cannabis can finish all of their cost cuttings, and then until Aurora Cannabis can focus primarily on their margins and their premium products, this stock, this company is just going to be a, a, a hemorrhage machine. And, and these, these projections that I usually put together with some of these these borderline companies where they're just sitting at, at, at break even, they're usually very helpful and you can project forward and say, you know what, this is going to be a stock that's going to pop. Aurora Cannabis, I see their stock going right back down. I would not be surprised if they print five bucks before the next quarter release. You know, it's sitting right around 10 bucks right now. It sold off significantly over the uh, past few uh, couple weeks since February when the Reddit attack occurred. But to be perfectly honest with you, Aurora Cannabis has printed nothing with regards to any positive developments that would have rationalized anybody buying this stock. But it gets caught up in the hype of cannabis. Yes, there are some great stocks out there and they're going to do well. But when you look and break down all the numbers, the financials for Aurora Cannabis, Aurora Cannabis today is not one of those companies that's going to go forward. I can't even come close to recommending this as a, a, as a viable buy. If it hits four bucks again, two bucks somewhere in there, maybe. But they're probably going to end up diluting that. So, you know, there's there's just nothing really positive about Rora Canvas at this one at this point, which is too bad because they were such a darling. This is the benefit of looking at 350 different cannabis companies. I can look at these name brand uh, household name cannabis companies and readily dismiss them simply because I'm looking at so many companies. I know exactly where Aurora Cannabis ranks and it's in the lower end. They're down somewhere, I want to say roughly in the bottom between 200 and say 150. That's how low they are. Mind you, the, I'm only really looking at 250 of these companies because the bottom 100 they're suspended. They're not even making their quotas. They may not even be printing financial statements. So when I say that Aurora Cannabis shows up at between 250 and 200, that is at the very bottom. But you can only look at see this when you compare so many companies to each other. I want to say thanks for stopping by and taking a look at this. I did want to break down this company despite it not being a, a buying opportunity. It's a benchmark stock within the industry. It's important to look at this company. That's why I wanted to look at this. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. I've got my free email from my website. There's a link down below. Click on the link, hit, hit up my website, sign up for the free email. This information shows up to your front door in your email box every day. Um, if you really like this content, share the video. Share it on YouTube, uh, Twitter and Facebook. Put the word out. Let people know. You know, I've been, I've been doing this for about a week now. I'm putting up about two videos a day. Go Diving deep into the internals of a company and posting that once a day on my website. So there's plenty of content, plenty of opportunities. If you're really interested, my premium subscription, $40, gets you full access, shows you my top picks, what I'm looking at, what prices to buy in, where I expect these stocks to go to. My name is D.H. Taylor. I want to say thanks for stopping by Cannabis Investing Newsletter. We'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.